know how it started. Pyrotechnics much too large for the room ignited highly flammable packing foam that was doubling as soundproofing. With nothing to stop it or even slow it, the inferno overwhelmed the crowd. It had to be very hot, very fast. And these people had to know that they were burning alive in there. But what most people don't know is that a simple 19th century technology might have saved every one of them. The number of dead from the Rhode Island nightclub disaster has risen to 98, with 30 badly burned patients still in critical condition. Could anything have saved them? Well, fire experts say yes, a technology that was developed in the 1850s, fire sprinklers. Why didn't the club have sprinklers? Well, the fact is, clubs like it all across the country don't have sprinklers, and the reason may surprise you, especially when you hear fire experts say that no one had to die when the club in West Warwick, Rhode Island, went up in flames. We know how it started. Pyrotechnics much too large for the room ignited highly flammable packing foam that was doubling as soundproofing. With nothing to stop it or even slow it, the inferno overwhelmed the crowd. had to be very hot, very fast. And these people had to know that they were burning alive in there. Chief Jack Chartier and Captains Leo Kennedy and Peter Janite were among the first to face the people pouring out of the club. People were burning. Um, it was good that we had uh, a tremendous amount of snow around. Um, a lot of people actually were putting themselves out in the snow banks. This is just 90 seconds after the fire started. There's the sound of windows smashing. And 10 seconds later, there is the terrible sight at the front door. There were bodies stacked in the doorway, um, pretty high, uh, arms outstretched. It was a human wall blocking escape. We had bodies that were stacked six and eight deep. At first, we thought it was just right there in the door. And then as we pushed further in, we could see that it went further in and around the corner. One of the people in that crush near the door was Tammy Passive. She told us that smoke plunged the club into total darkness as she was swept up by the crowd. We all got stuck in the front door, the front entrance, and then the flames started coming. <laughs> and it was scary, and I twisted, and I and people pulling at me, and then finally the police officer pulled me out. <laughs> and I had to keep it down myself. I was not going to die here. I was refused to die here. <laughs> Within three minutes, there was almost no air to breathe. In this side door, you can see the crawl space under the smoke is inches high. Anybody inside? Well, the air was just superheated. You know, it was it was high. It, it burned my throat, and I just stopped breathing and held my breath and kept crawling. Tim Rosano crawled until he found a window to jump through. That's him in the red jacket. Another ten seconds, and I would have passed out from yep. from lack of oxygen. The one thing I'll never forget is, is the screams from the people because it was you know you knew that they were they weren't they were screaming for their lives. The screaming would end in minutes the building went to the ground with nearly 100 people inside standing there the next morning and the smoke was clearing and i thought that it looked to me like pictures that i saw in in school of the holocaust in three minutes four thousand years of life expectancy of wonderful young people were extinguished not because of two boneheads, the pirate tech, but because of a lack of care by our society to do something. Stanley Believe Chesley says sprinklers would have saved those yeah, lives. He's a lawyer who's been in the middle of the biggest fire cases in U.S. history. This is proven technology that's been available and cheap for over a hundred years. In 1977, there were no sprinklers in the Beverly Hills Supper Club in Kentucky, where 165 were killed. 
Three years later, there were no sprinklers in the upper floors of the MGM Grand Hotel in Las Vegas, where 87 died. Chesley sued for victims in both fires. When you saw the images of the Rhode Island fire, what did you think? I couldn't believe that 26 years later, we haven't learned anything. If the sprinklers had been installed in Rhode Island, what do you imagine the outcome would have been? It would have been a very localized fire. And there would have been one local spot where it had caught fire up in the timbers. That's where the sprinklers are. They would have gone off and extinguished it. End of story. Oh, people would have gotten wet. The furniture might have gotten ruined. But so what? Is he right? We'll have a look at this. Three days before the Rhode Island fire, there was a nightclub fire you didn't hear about. This is Minneapolis. There were pyrotechnics on stage, an inferno in the ceiling, and 150 people inside. But no one was hurt. The club had sprinklers compared to Rhode Island. Why were there no sprinklers here? Well, the Rhode Island Club was built before they were required. But even today, Rhode Island does not require sprinklers in clubs that hold 300 people or fewer. And it's not just Rhode Island. It turns out this 300-person exemption is common in much of the country. It's widely adopted in part because it's found in one of the Bibles of fire codes, written by an outfit called the National Fire Protection Association. The NFPA was set up more than 100 years ago by fire officials and insurance companies, but today its membership has expanded to thousands that also include building contractors, building owners, architects, even sports promoters and churches. In short, just about anyone who has an interest in how buildings are built and how much they cost. The NFPA codes fill volumes with standards for everything, ranging from high-rise evacuations to safely serving flaming crepe Suzette. And in the middle of it all, there is this, the code that requires sprinklers only in clubs with more than 300 patrons. Jim Shannon is the president of the NFPA. Everyone we talk to says that your code is state-of-the-art, best there is. So. How did you come up with the idea that it's okay to leave 300 people in a building without sprinklers, but 301 is too many? Our codes are written by committees of experts who are drawn from all over the country, and uh, they determine what the appropriate thresholds are, what the appropriate provisions are. Shannon told us that he doesn't know the technical justification for the 300 rule, so we went to one of those experts he mentioned. Jake Paul sits on the committee that set the standard. Where does that number come from, 300? Um, I wish I knew. Pauls is an expert in building safety who pushes for tougher standards at the NFPA. There isn't a, a scientific study that says 300 is what we need. In fact, the whole field of building safety is there's a dearth of science and technology there. It almost seems like that number was pulled out of thin air. Well, sometimes on the committee, we, we talk about that. We hope that what we do it goes slightly beyond that. In other words, we're not throwing darts at a wall and arbitrarily choosing numbers. They are judgment calls. No one at NFPA could cite a study that supports the 300 rule. But they told us it appears to be based on the idea that a building holding 300 is considered small so people, in theory, can get out. Let me quote some statistics that your organization came up with. In homes, sprinklers lower deaths by 75%. In hotels, sprinklers lower deaths by 91%. And in fact, the NFPA did a study that looked at nine years of fires in assembly-type buildings. And no one was ever killed in a building that was sprinklered and had an operating sprinkler system. What does that tell you? We support sprinklers. I think it is important, however, that we look at all of the elements of, uh, of fire safety when we're devising our codes, and, uh, and that's what we do. Shannon stuck close to the NFPA message, saying that the code works, and it was violations of that code that were responsible for the Rhode Island fire. They ignored the, the codes when they put those flammable and combustible materials on the walls. They ignored the codes when they used the pyrotechnics uh, display. Aren't sprinklers, though, a hedge against other things going wrong, against people doing things that are just plain stupid. 
Well, NFPA is a big advocate of sprinklers, and uh, wherever uh, the people who sit on our code committees, the experts, feel that sprinklers are required, we require them. And yet, if you've got 299 people in a building, they don't get sprinkler coverage. Well, NFPA is a strong advocate for sprinkler use, but it would be a mistake to think that that is the only answer. It seems difficult to think that this number has just floated along year after year after year with no basis in science and no one looking at it to ask themselves, isn't this too many? I, I think these are good questions. One could say there's a lot of blame to go around here. There's, you could attach some blame to the committee, perhaps. Say, well, the committee should have known better. Um, uh, maybe it's a matter of the local jurisdiction saying the 300 wasn't adequate. A few local jurisdictions, local fire departments, believe that it is not adequate. Floyd Jordan, the fire chief in Miami Beach, Florida, worries about the 60 nightclubs in his town. Well, we have to enforce the code. Uh, we cannot require sprinklers where the code does not say you have to require sprinklers. Miami Beach follows the NFPA code and the 300 rule for clubs. So to make up for the lack of sprinklers, Jordan enforces what may be the toughest inspection program in the nation. Fire inspectors check every club every weekend. We went along with George Barrero and his partner Isabel Ochoa on their rounds from midnight to 4 a.m. 68 in, 24 out. They check the number of patrons in every club, and when there are too many, they bar the door. One club boasts a floor covered in real grass, so the inspectors make sure that the lawn is well tended. The grass gets changed every Monday, and, and it's wet to the touch. Every night we make them wet it down, so they don't have any accidental fire by anybody dropping a cigarette. In this place, the manager hung new drapes. He said they were fireproof, but Miami Beach puts all fabrics to the test. The drapes didn't burn. If they had, Barrero says that he would have pulled them down on the spot. The inspections are thorough, but still, Chief Jordan would like to see something more. When you heard about Rhode Island, yes. what did you think? If certain fire safety systems were in that building, there's a realization that probably there would not have been a single loss of life. And basically what I'm talking about are sprinkler systems. You believe with all your heart that if there had been a sprinkler system in that building, there would have been very little loss of life? Yes, I do. And yet it is not... I question whether there would have been any loss of life. You don't think anybody would have been killed? I question it. Yes, I do. Time to change the code? I would dare say that the majority of the fire chiefs in this country would say yes. Later this month, the National Fire Protection Association is to hold a rare emergency meeting. Among the issues they'll discuss is whether the 300-person sprinkler threshold is too high.